What's up guys? Welcome to the den. Today we are at the Dripper store in Brussels and we're doing a pop-up this weekend in Belgium. So I'm gonna show you guys around, show you what's up, and I hope you guys enjoy. I decided to split the exhibit in three parts. Here we have the regular dunks section, starting with the 85s that I showed in my first video, the Soul Collector pack, we have the Yankees, we have the Cowboys, and we have the Las Vegas Soul Collectors, Year of the Pigs, Crazy Pair, uh, fragments that I showed a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you guys know what this is. This is the Dornbecker dunk from 2006 and it was limited to only 1,050 pairs. This is the Hanshin Tigers sort of PEs. There were only 48 pairs for the baseball players from that team, a Japanese team. This is my latest purchase, the Dubai uh, dunks, which were given out to employees from Nike Dubai crazy swoosh with the gold crackled leather, super rare pair. We have the Coralines here, only about a thousand pairs made as well. Uh, a couple of 6.0s, these are the Spanish Moss. Uh, I think those are super cool and they're very reminiscent of the Ugly Duckling pack. We have the Brown Hems, NERDs, only a thousand fifty pairs of those and those are numbered right here. So this is number 782 out of 1,050. Uh, we have a little Pharrell section at the back, which we'll get to. Undefeateds, we saw the recent Air Force Ones release. The Air Force Ones were based on the undefeated no liner dunks. There's no padding at all. There were a few other colorways which weren't anything to do with undefeated. So that's kind of the most famous one. These are the Jord dunks. That's the nickname of those models dunks based on Jordan colorways. This one is based on the Jordan 3 True Blue. I think it works, I think it's pretty dope. But a few of those Jordan dunks are kind of funky. You have like Jordan 4 dunks, Jordan 11 dunks. But yeah, those are one of the best. Um, CDG, those came out in 2015 and I think those played a pretty big role in bringing back the, the Nike dunk. Those ones are crazy, those uh, are only limited to 24 pairs. Sort of PE for the All-Star game in 2004 in LA. So these are kind of the LA Clippers colors with the elephant print. This logo is the Presto logo. So this is the Dunk Esto. Uh, it's supposed to be like a hybrid between the Dunk and the Presto. It's more of a Dunk, but you have a few Presto features. The plastic cage, the logo, and I guess like the zoom technology uh, you have on the back. And this was a plot collab, so pretty cool. And you have that hemp material that you get on the, the classic hemp dunks. We have the Hayes dunks. I don't have the Lowe's anymore right now. One of my favorite artists and uh, dunk projects from 2003, uh, super cool pair. There's, there's also a Hyper Strike a version with like the special box and the only difference between the regular version and the hyper strike is the tongue tag the tongue tag on the hyper strike has the Hayes signature on it and this one just the regular nike tag so yeah that's the regular dunks version let's get to the sb section so um i decided to bring like the the classics um that everyone loves let's do it chronologically first orange box Orange box, very first SBs, they didn't have a special box or anything, just a regular vintage box of Nike. So that's the Lodens from 2002, one of the very first SBs to ever come out. And then the first color box was the silver box. So silver box SBs, we have Heineken's, the Supreme set, so red, Carolina blue, and uh, Team Orange. So those are all from 2003. The Jedi's are a silver box as well, classic colorway. The hemp's are silver box as well. So there was the blue hemp. This is the smallest size that was made, size six for the ladies out there. <laughs> uh, check my website, sneakerdent.com if you're interested. Team red hemp's, I think, or burgundy hemp's. And then there was the green ones, which were the most limited. 
uh, only 420 pairs. We have the bars as well. Very cool colorway. After the silver box, you had the pink box. So one of the classics from the pink box era, the Stussy SB fan favorite. The Shanghai. These are based on the traditional Chinese bamboo bowl. Um, so these are really crazy. Even the laces are like rope laces. You have the this very special stitching. Pink box classic Tiffany's. So these have been getting quite a lot of attention recently because of the Tiffany Air Force One. So this is obviously a real Tiffany collab that just came out, and this was uh, inspired by the Tiffany colors, but this had nothing to do with Tiffany & Co. So it's pretty cool to have these side by side. Um, and this is really one of the legendary Nike SBs. Following the pink SB box era, you had the black box era. So the black box era had a few classics as well. Um, Purple Pigeons, Nike SB just released this colorway, which is very similar to the New York Pigeons. So the people kind of nicknamed it the Purple Pigeon. You could find uh, pigeon patches on eBay. So a lot of people stuck it on the heel uh, to kind of reference the OG pigeons. Uh, but yeah, there were, there's no relation between the Purple Pigeon and the actual pigeon dunks. You have the MF Dooms, another fan favorite. These came out in 2007. Baby Bears, Papa Bears series, and I don't have the Mama Bears, which is a mid dunk trail lens. The Jordan 1 Travis Scott that came out in 2019 brought some attention to this pair because of how similar they are. Another black box classic, the Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Deads, represents the Mexican Halloween holiday. So you have the crazy details on the uppers and like the purple contrast. Uh, paneling and uh, translucent sole. Newcastles here, uh, which are also beer inspired, just like the Heineken's. Uh, you have the first lobsters, the red ones from 2008. So the gold box era is 2007-2008. And the Mondrians as well, another classic. And then one SB that kind of stands out from all of these to me is this one, the EMB Miami. Uh, it's part of the Made in Brazil series. Like the Nike SB tag is a little bit off. The size tag is very strange. The laces are very thin. So these are actually made in Brazilian factories. So completely different from all the other dunks. And they were all limited to only 400 pairs. There was a bunch. There was a few highs, a few lows. Um, from the Made in Brazil series. Yeah, that's the Nike SB section. And finally, we have the Air Force One Reebok section. Some of my favorite Air Force Ones, Mr. Cartoons. So we have the Livestrong version and we have the original Spiderweb version. This one is from 2004. This one is from 2009 or eight. Legendary pair by the uh, LA based uh, tattoo artist. Then we have a couple of LeBrons. I should be making a video soon on the full Chamber of Fear pack. So uh, uh, these are just two of the six colorways. Uh, here you have a couple of old school Air Force Ones. Uh, this is from 1992 and I'm actually wearing the retro from uh, 2015 I believe which is actually super uh, super close to the original in terms of quality and color. So I really love those. Uh, these are from 1992. These are from 1995. Uh, and I think just the, the shape and the materials on old Air Force Ones are just unbeatable. This is a little gem. This is a Doran Becker Women's Air Force One from 2008. And when I found this pair, uh, I instantly kind of saw the entourage uh, vibe. It's like a reverse entourage uh, colorway. And just the details, you have like embroidery on the heel, you got textured leather on the mid panel, you have a fish skin, <laughs> a swoosh, uh, special perf perforations. So just so many crazy details, such a fire colorway. Um, that I don't think a lot uh, of 
people know about, so I was super excited when I got, got those in hand. The Busy Peas, uh, which are f for me one of the best Air Force Ones, just the most creative and crazy looking pairs. This is the Livestrong version. Uh, another legendary Air Force One, the Croc Skins from 2007. Uh, this pair celebrated the 25th anniversary of the Air Force One. Uh, retailed at $2,000 uh, and that's kind of justified by the super premium uh, materials made in Italy and there were only two and a half thousand pairs made. This is pretty cool, I thought I'd put these together. Uh, just because of the kind of materials, the croc skin materials. This is a Nike ID from 2013. And then you have another Nike ID with similar, is it the same year? Yeah, actually it's the same year. So that's why the same colors, but with the transparent, like on the Invisible Women Air Force One, which is a classic. Uh, Mac attacks, which are coming back soon. Those are the originals from 1985. Babestas, the SpongeBob's. This came in a crazy special box with like a massive SpongeBob box. Uh, crazy pair. And then we have the little Reebok section. Starting off with the board flips. These are just two colorways. Uh, there were a bunch of crazy colorways, which I, I'll definitely make a video on. This is the classic, the watermelon colorway. Uh, and it was the skate skate shoe for Reebok uh, back around 2006. These are the boutiques, um, two classic colorways as well. This is the model that uh, Pharrell first introduced when he started his uh, partnership with Reebok with Nigo. So Billionaire Boys Club ice cream that's Pharrell and Nigo, and then finally uh, one of the craziest shoes that I that I own, the Reebok uh, Kanye shoe which is an s dot carter uh, model so the s dot carter is uh, stands for sean carter sean carter being jay-z uh, so jay-z had his own kind of line with reebok in the early 2000s and uh, there were a few kanye samples there were four colorways uh, never released and this is one of them very openly inspired from gucci with the green and red uh, colorway and even the silhouette is based on Gucci shoes. And now we're at the back of the shop, so uh, we have a couple of pairs here. The Ari Menthols, obviously one of my all-time favorite sneakers um, with a little Newport uh, keychain, which is pretty cool. We have the Airships and the Sky Forces, which I showed in my 1980s collection video. Go check that out. Last but not least, we have the 1985 display here with a, a few of the original colorways uh, natural gray, royal, red, black and white which is the last pair I acquired and the powder blues. Black and whites are definitely on the rarer end of 1985's. I thought it'd be interesting to make a quick comparison with the uh, very recent retro of the black and white Jordan 1. Let me guys know what you think. I think like the swoosh could be a bit more old school. The toe box could be a bit more true to the original, but overall, obviously the shape is uh, by far the closest we've seen since Jordan Brand creating retro. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm also displaying my brand uh, outsole inspired from uh, different references from sneaker history and culture. The outsole logo um, is based on the Dunk and Jordan 1 outsole, which obviously are two models that played a huge role in sneaker culture, so I thought that logo made sense. The 1985 collection, the Chicago and red uh, colors, but also uh, 1984 and like the whole, uh, you know, Big Brother's watching you vibe. We had the Barcelona Michael Jordan shorts, Po JP t-shirt, um, I mentioned in the fragment video uh, the role that Japan played in the history of the dunk. It comes with this special hang tag which is inspired from old school Japanese magazines. The magazine is Sneaker Jack and uh, it just has crazy uh, archives from the early 2000s. The magazines are also available on the website. If you're ever looking for one and they're sold out, just hit me up. Uh, I'm 
always good at finding this kind of stuff. This is the first t-shirt that we made without sole. Less is more with Peter Moore's face on the back, uh, kind of in the Dennis Rodman style. Um, Peter Moore designed the Dunk and the Jordan 1 and a few other models, so he's a true legend uh, in sneaker history. Ari Menthol, Newport inspired collection with this t-shirt and the shorts, which are based on the uh, cigarette uh, filter, uh, which uh, Ari used on the Ari Menthols as well, on the insole. So yeah, uh, now uh, my friend Loïc, uh, who's the boss here at Dripper Store, just arrived, so hopefully we can ask him a few questions so he shows us around. Um, honestly, he's uh, making big things here in Brussels, so I'm super excited to be doing this with him and uh, the shop is, uh, is beautiful, so yeah, let's go see him. Okay guys, so I'm with my friend Loïc. First and foremost, drip check. What you got on feet? Uh, so I got the Jordan 3 uh, Steels. Okay, okay. Uh, Something steels. different? Yeah. A little bit different uh, from yeah, what year? Uh, 2009, I think. Yeah? yeah okay, think okay, so. okay. Old school. Uh, I have my, uh, my new collection for my brand, so it's Anomia, actually. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, pretty pretty cool. I have the new shop also. Uh, we we need to check out the, yeah. the shop. So now your brand has its own store. Yes. Next store. So we'll check it out next. But yeah, show us around the new space. Literally was uh, ready for the opening yesterday, like right on time. Crazy. Was, <laughs> it looked really like a, a battlefield a few hours before the pop-up, but we made it, and now it looks. I prefer like uh, old, old, old sneakers because like there's like story behind the colorways, behind the shape, etc. That's new shoes don't really uh, show. I'll say yeah. So yeah, of course the the buck, for example. Yeah. <laughs> That's of course <laughs> the guy sneaker then has also. So yeah, this shoe is like really insane. Um, I had the, the Oompa Loompa also, but it's his favorite, his oh, favorite so SB, and he forgot that he could ask. His guy's sneaker yes. to, to source a little pair of Oompa Loompa, so coming very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 85s. Yeah, the 85. Classic. The 85 are so cool. They are also like really uh, destroyed, I will say. Not but, but it anymore. gives it uh, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah really. Pretty cool. Do you think you would sell this pair or like you're, it's no, not no, for no, sale? No. Just no, no, it's not, it's not for sale. Yeah, yeah. This pair is like the, the grail of the shop. I think we'll stay uh, forever. Okay. Goofy boy. Yeah, yeah. goofy boys. Yeah, I've never I, had those. I really love the like details on the um, insole, like with the with the little guy skating. 2008. Yeah, 2008. So yeah, and maples, that. very cool pair as well. Yeah, yeah. maples. Like um, now they don't do like a lot of release with the black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always so, with the white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think like with the black um, outsole, it's like really changed completely. The yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really cool. One question that I always wonder, like, as a sneakerhead, obviously you have your own taste, your own preferences. How do you balance what you like and what you have to sell, you know, to your clients for the shop to kind of do um, well? First, um, I will buy like all the pairs that I like personally. So uh, yeah, there's not like that much pair like. Oh. So for example, uh, for example, the Bucks, uh, okay, for example, so the, the Oompa Loompa, for example, like this kind of pair. Uh, also Jordan 11. I'm, I'm, Big really on fast. Jordan 11s? Yeah, yeah, I really like Jordan 11s. Okay, are there people buying, you know, those kinds yes, of pairs? Yes, because like when you uh, when you really love something, uh, it's really uh, simple to sell. So I'll try to have like 10 or 20 pairs that I really like personally. So when I go to uh, an OG sneaker and I explain to the guy who discovered the world of sneaker now, I explain that there's a story behind this model, etc. That will just like completely uh, be in love with this because like they have something to tell to their uh, yeah. parents, to their friends, etc. to say, yeah, yeah, I spent $300, but <laughs> there's a story behind yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. it will be this kind of people that will, okay. Uh, and then for the rest, yeah, it's just like um, experience. I know that now people just like um, a shape. Um, it's not like a colorway or, or a certain pair that it's on hype. And then it will depend on the taste of the people for the colorway. People like are spending a lot of money and they expect to put the pair with everything. Mm. 
What's the concept? It's more than a sneaker store. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, tell us about that. Downstairs, uh, you have like a, a recording studio, a place for showcase, a place for um, art exhibition. And uh, yeah, the goal is to, to promote young artists uh, in, in the really center uh, of Brussels. Because like, uh, when I was like 18, 19, I was doing music, I was doing paint, etc. I was also starting uh, brands. When you're young, you don't have like a lot of money to, to, to put in your work, to put in your uh, music or whatever. I tried to, to uh, solve that problem mm. um, by uh, just like renting like a big space where people can just like express themselves. Mm. For me, when you are an artist, the, the most important thing is community. Yeah. Um, and when you do like showcase or art exhibition, like people will really come yeah, talk yeah. to you and you can explain to them what you're doing, why you're doing it. And so yeah, it's it's really like um, bring people together. So yeah, so yeah people then are really um, more invests in what you're doing and you can really build a community. Mm. Let's go check out the Anomia store. Let's go. Welcome in Anomia. <laughs> So yeah, so this used to be the sneaker store, so much smaller space. Yep. And now within just a few days, you transformed it into your brand's shop, so super cool. So yeah, show us around, tell us about your brand. So yeah, Anomia is like a, a, a story concept behind. So um, so yeah, we try to, to really tell a story uh, with our clothes. Anomia means that there is like no law, no, no structure, no, no society, uh, and so we apart from that point. Uh, so this is the logo of our like space company. Okay. Like a NASA or something like okay. that. And uh, so yeah, we just like take our spaceship, we just like quit Earth and uh, start exploring uh, all the planets from our um, solar system. Okay. So there is nine planets. So now Aphasia is the tenth planet. Um, and so yeah, we just like start exploring, it and then we'll just like continue the story um, on Instagram to just like really tell the people what we are doing on that planet, uh, what's next, um, and yeah, like explain really more details about uh, about the concept of planets, and then yeah, the rest will be. Uh, will be on Instagram. Okay, okay. Follow for more, follow for more. Yeah. In one year you, you know, opened up a new store, you have your brand like full time having a their its own store. Like what's what's next? Uh, next will be other shops in other other countries. Um, so yeah we we are like um, trying to be uh, in France, uh, also in Italy, because uh, like, yeah, Italy's dream for me like to be, uh, to be in Milano. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we are like trying to export uh, the concepts yeah. of the shop. We'll have like the, like the whole um, setup of machine, etc. to produce ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. clothes. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, young brands will be able to come here to, to rent it. Um, and to just like do it themselves to um, increase, I would say, the, the, the level of their brands and mm. also to, to uh, produce cheaper. Yeah. So yeah, young artists will be able to, to just produce at uh, low cost. Mm. Um, and so yeah, the goal is to to make people able to do what what we do and to leave uh, their. Damn. For the takeover, it's coming soon. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for watching. A uh, big thank you to Loïc for hosting us here, Thanks welcoming you. us. Uh, it was a sick experience. Um, hopefully we do this again in Milan or yes. in France. It's a pleasure. Um, definitely go check out, I'll link uh, his socials for the store, for the brand. Uh, he's a hardworking, passionate dude. Uh, so show some love and thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching the goats. <laughs>